tall. But unlike you, I've never killed anyone. Why the fuck you lying? Technically speaking, he's not really a murderer. He's testing us. He wants us to survive this. What? I've never murdered anyone in my life. The decisions are up to them. Really, nigga? I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. Listen, I have seen every Saw movie, except of course the most recent film, Jigsaw. And there's one thing I've realized. Jigsaw is in fact a murderer. Not only that, but he's also a demented psychopathic human being who consistently contradicts his own self-proclaimed rules. Now I know what you might be thinking. Jigsaw isn't a murderer. He says so himself. His goal is to make people appreciate their lives and to do the right thing. And I don't blame you for believing that. I too once believed that Jigsaw, although going about it in a truly disturbing, dark, unnecessarily twisted, overly complicated, and needlessly violent way, was still trying to help people. But now, after careful consideration, I have fully turned away from that. I'm going to show you why I think so lowly of John Kramer, aka Jigsaw. I'm not going to talk about the quality of the movies, or the plot, or the characters, or any of the technical components. I'm not even going to expose the fact that he's somehow able to capture so many people without ever getting caught. No, 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 I'm just going to expose his bullshit philosophy. I'm going to show you that although he paints himself to be this highly intelligent, detailed savior, he is truly a despicable, violent torturer who takes pleasure in the pain of others. I'm walking out of my comfort zone of making rap videos and how to make anything sound stupid. And instead, I'm sharing my controversial opinion on the true nature of Jigsaw, and why I believe he is undoubtedly a killer. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. It's no surprise to anyone who has seen the Saw films that Jigsaw is, at the very least, a criminal who employs other criminals, namely Amanda Young and Detective Hoffman. He researches people whom he believes live unworthy lives and proceeds to sneak around until he can find the victim, drug and kidnap them, and then put them into oftentimes mostly inescapable traps. You might be thinking, oh, but H2 Mask, those traps are all escapable. He gives them rules and everything. They just don't have the survival instinct. And if you're thinking that, I may be somewhat inclined to agree with you in that I don't believe Jigsaw usually makes traps from which the victim cannot escape. But I'm going to show you that he often puts people into situations where someone must die. Think about when Jigsaw made Amanda kill a drug dealer. I understand the drug dealer may have had some previous unseen trial himself before we see Amanda's trap. And while that may be true in this case, it surely isn't true in many other cases. But you may also be thinking it isn't wrong for him to place people in situations where someone has to die because he's asking people to place their lives above others, testing them for their survival instincts by forcing them to break their moral codes. One, if you think that, you should probably go to a psychologist just to make sure you aren't a psychopath yourself. And two, these games which require someone to die violate Jigsaw's rules which he lays out himself time and time again. He often states that he intends for all of his victims to survive, that he wants them to succeed, but if that's truly the case, then how can you explain the traps in which a person or multiple people are forced to die? Take for instance the carousel trap in Saw 6. What exactly was the point of the trap? I understand that William was meant to relate his own life insurance policy to his workers and only allow one third to live just as his policy indirectly dictates, but as you've probably heard, two wrongs don't make a right. William only being allowed to save two people while the others were forced to die only created more death and did virtually nothing in helping those who were killed on the carousel. What chance did they have to save themselves? How could they all have won? The trap only encouraged the victims to lie and backstab one another, but gives them no true way to save their own lives. So if Jigsaw truly wanted each of his victims to experience some sort of regret or remorse for their life decisions and find ways to repent or make up for their vile acts, then he would have set this trap up in a way which would have given them all a chance to survive rather than just two. So, four people died in the carousel trap, and this is my first point in showing Jigsaw's demented nature and how he is a murderer. Now, I understand, Jigsaw was already dead by this point, so he himself didn't physically set up the trap, which means he couldn't have committed the murder. However, Jigsaw still designed the trap, which shows that his ideas of rehabilitation can involve one person either killing others, as I'll show later, or one person being forced to save only a select number of a group, which indirectly causes others to die, as seen in the carousel trap. This also brings me to another important point. When Jigsaw sets up traps in which someone eventually dies, does that make him a murderer? For instance, let's look at the carousel trap again, even though he didn't physically initiate it. We know four people died, shot in the chest with a shotgun. It was clearly shown on screen. We also know that these four victims didn't kill themselves, and it clearly wasn't some random accident that couldn't be avoided, so they must have been killed. 
We see the shotgun killed him, but the real question is, who killed him? Was it William because he chose to either stop or not stop the gun from firing, or was it whoever set up the trap in the first place? It couldn't have been William because he didn't actually kill anyone. Even if he let all six victims die, he still wouldn't be a murderer since all he did was not save anyone. The shotgun was going to fire regardless of what William did, so the true murderer was whoever rigged the trap. And believe me, that was murder, even if it was a trap. It was meant to kill. Think about it like this. If I put a bear trap over someone's head while they slept that only went off once they woke up, that is still murder, even if the trap only activated once they woke up. The reason is because the trap is only a tool, just like a knife or a gun. A lot more complicated, sure, but a tool nonetheless. A tool for killing. So the true murderer is whoever set up the trap. A time delay doesn't change that. Now I keep bringing up this idea of murder and killing, so I think I should mention their true definitions. Murder is defined as the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. And to more fully understand that, I should also say that to kill is defined as causing the death of a person, animal, or other living thing. This definition of killing is important because we can argue that Jigsaw has indeed killed by causing the deaths of many people by putting them into life-threatening situations and life-altering situations. I think it's also fair, though, that I say there are multiple definitions of both of these terms, and I will confess that under certain definitions you may be able to argue that Jigsaw is not a murderer if he doesn't truly want his victims to die, as they could be possibly considered accidents. However, he does realize the severity and possibility of death in these traps, which does suggest that while he may not want his victims to die, he probably expects them to die or become highly mutilated and handicapped due to his traps. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. Now, back to the real debate. He hates murders but asks Amanda to murder someone in the first movie. <laughs> Now I understand what you may be thinking, but H2 Mask, that makes Amanda a murderer, not Jigsaw. He didn't kill him. And you're right about that. Jigsaw did not kill him. Like I said before, I won't try to twist my definition of murder to make Jigsaw appear like more of a killer, but his request of Amanda speaks to his demented personality and affinity for all things violent. How can Jigsaw say he despises murderers and then ask someone else to kill someone, even if it is to save her own life? You might also be asking, well, we don't know if the drug dealer had some task beforehand that he failed. His death by Amanda may be some punishment for his failure of the test. And while it may be true that we don't know if he failed some test before the room with Amanda, like I said earlier, that doesn't change the fact that Jigsaw put Amanda into a position requiring her to kill another human being, an act which John said himself to be terrible. So in the first movie alone, Jigsaw is, at the very least, a hypocrite. But maybe you're thinking that even though he was doing some questionable or even downright horrible acts, he was still helping those who survived lead more appreciative, honorable lives. But I disagree. Think about Jigsaw's success rate. Think about how many people he's either killed or caused to die. And he has killed a lot of people. Not that I haven't killed anyone BS he's always trying to say. To kill does mean to cause to die. But if you want to believe that Jigsaw is truly an altruistic vigilante who takes matters into his own hands and tries to be this messiah type figure who saves lives by getting others to appreciate appreciate their blessings, then you should probably also believe that Jigsaw wants people to survive and would try anything he can in order to help as many people as possible. You would think that Jigsaw would leave people's fates in their own hands rather than as a pawn for someone else's gain. And to explain some of the controversial points I just made, let's take a look at some of the tests Jigsaw has forced people to participate in. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. Number one, the rack. A truly vicious trap in which every one of Timothy Young's limbs is contorted to the point of fracturing. He had no way to save himself, and I believe he didn't even fail some previous test, like you can argue with Amanda's victim, because he looked extremely nervous and surprised about his location when Jeff walks into the room. He wouldn't even have had these emotions if he had already played in one of Jigsaw's games. He probably would have survived if Jigsaw made the lock more obvious, especially considering that Jeff had forgiven him, which was the point of the test in the first place and he wanted to save his life. I believe Timothy's death falls far more on Jigsaw's life than Jeff's. Number two, the Venus flytrap. An iconic trap in the Saw series in which a man is forced to cut out his own eye so he can get the key stuck behind it. Number three, the head decapitator trap in Saw 5, where five victims had to retrieve a key while being restrained by a string connected to each of them. This caused them to fight against one another since they had limited time to get the key before the strings would retract and decapitate whoever hadn't unlocked the collar. Number four, in my opinion, the most undeserving death in the entire series arises in Saw 7. I know Jigsaw himself didn't commit this murder because he was already dead, but I thought this death was so morally unjustified, even for Jigsaw, that I had to include it in this video. He did design the trap though, so I think it still deserves a mention in this video. The death I'm talking about is of Bobby Dagan's wife Joyce, who was burned alive for no reason other than to show the faults in Bobby's lies. Joyce, however, didn't even know Bobby was lying, so I don't understand why she was killed. 
She had no way to save herself, and it was also one of the most torturous and gruesome deaths in the entire series, making it the most morally wrong and hypocritical death of all of the Saw films. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's no way I could cover every trap in this short video, but I can at least highlight some of the trends that I've seen across these films. One trend I've noticed is that, while Jigsaw claims to despise murderers and claims to want his participants to survive his tests, many times his traps directly contradict this thinking. For example, if Jigsaw truly wished for his victims to survive, he wouldn't set up traps which neither serve to help his victims learn from their mistakes nor to appreciate their lives more fully. Traps would simply kill the victim due to ignorance of Jigsaw's games or just the victim's own stupidity should not be used if they don't help anyone. Traps such as those found in Saw 2 highlight my point exactly. Obby was trapped in a furnace and condemned to being burned alive, but he didn't have any way of escaping and he couldn't have known what was going to happen. Of course, you could say that this was Obby's own stupidity and ignorance of the situation, but Jigsaw's goal should have been to teach Obby about the errors of his ways, which could not have been accomplished if Obby was unable to escape. With some other traps, the victim had some task to complete in order to escape, but Abby essentially just stepped onto a bear trap. It was a trap he couldn't get out of. The only thing he could do to survive was to either avoid getting inside the furnace in the first place or only take one cure. But considering there were others threatening him, and since it had two cures, he felt he had no choice. In Saw 6, William had to choose between a mother and a loner, two victims who had no way to save themselves. Their fate was completely in William's hands. I understand that it was meant to highlight the flaws of William's life insurance policy about not taking an individual's loved ones into account as well rather than just physical health. However, the punishment didn't fit the crime. Just because Alan, the loner, didn't have any family doesn't mean he deserved to die. Jigsaw also put the mother's life in grave danger even though he apparently believed she lived a far more fulfilling life than Alan since he implied he chose her because she contradicts William's life insurance policy. Like I said before, this doesn't prove Jigsaw is a murderer since he himself didn't physically set up the trap, but it does speak to his demented and cruel nature as a twisted, psychopathic, self-proclaimed savior. All of the evidence I brought forth points not only to the fact that Jigsaw is indeed a murderer, but also that he takes pleasure in these deplorable acts, and not because he feels he is saving these people, but because he is demented. In Saw 3, when Jeff listens to Timothy Young's tape, Jigsaw says, This is my personal favorite, as he refers to the rat. The device Timothy is strapped to is my personal favorite. I call it the rat. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is undoubtedly one of Jigsaw's most notorious and gruesome traps in the whole series as it slowly breaks every limb in your body and then twists your neck until you're dead. Jigsaw may simply be admiring his own work when he says this, but this statement speaks volumes about who he is as a human being, seeing people as toys which he can manipulate both physically through torture as well as mentally through some of his other tests and threats. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. If Jigsaw were truly an altruistic character seeking only to help people fully appreciate their blessings and to help them correct the mistakes they had made or even the personalities themselves, then he would prioritize their life first and foremost. His goal should be to keep them alive, to have a high rate of success. And since he thinks so lowly of the prison system, saying that people often get out and make the same mistakes, you would think that he has a good rate of success. When a person fails a test and they die, that's not only a failure on the victim's part, but also on Jigsaw. He sets up the test with the intention of rehabilitating a specific victim paying careful attention to who they are and what they've done, a far more specialized system than a typical prison, but far more often than not, they don't succeed. If far more people fail than pass, then there is clearly something wrong with the test. Let's look at Jigsaw's success rate. I won't count everyone from the series, but I'll take note of the important characters, paying special attention to who failed and who succeeded to see just how effective Jigsaw's tests really are. I'm going to count all the people who survived his test and all the people who failed. I'm only considering the traps Jigsaw either implemented or designed himself, not the ones Amanda and Hoffman created. So, Dr. Gordon, Bobby Dagan, Simone, Daniel, the two insurance employees from Saw 6, the woman in the stab trap from Saw 4, and two of the Saw 5 victims all survived Jigsaw's trials. But... Cecil, Adam, Eric Matthews, Ivan, Art Blank, Jeff, Lynn, Rig, Danica Scott, Timothy Young, Amanda, William, Michael, Alan, Joyce, Paul, Mark, the man in the stab trap from Saw 4, the man at the beginning of Saw 4, the janitor, and four of the insurance employees from Saw 6, six of the criminals from Saw 2, three of Bobby Dagan's associates, and three of the Saw 5 victims all either fail or die. And I know I'm probably missing a few people. Now that's a very poor rate of success. In fact, from the names I've listed, only 9 out of 36 people survive, making for a 25% success rate, which is actually a bit higher than I expected. But you would think that if Jigsaw were truly a benevolent figure, then he would rethink his approach after seeing so many people die and so few succeed, but he doesn't. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. Now that I've shown you just how dark and twisted Jigsaw's motives and personality truly is, I think it's time I share why I think he is actually a murderer. 
In Saw 2, Jigsaw poisons a group of people who later fight for their lives in the abandoned house. We also know that Laura, one of the characters trapped in the house, dies from this poison after a violent seizure, so he is undoubtedly the killer in this case. If you poison someone, regardless of how long it takes and regardless of whether you give them some barely achievable access to a cure, you are still the killer. You can argue that Jigsaw didn't actually cause the deaths of many of the characters in the series. You can say that it, they brought it on themselves or that he didn't set up the trap. You can say that he was dead or any other excuse for Jigsaw. But this time, there is not an alternative. He was there, he poisoned them, he intentionally poisoned them, and therefore murdered Laura. All right, so that's the full video. That's why I think Jigsaw is a killer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It took me a lot of time to make this. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Please leave a comment. I'd love to know what you think as well. Check out some of my other videos too. I really appreciate it. More great stuff coming. Stay tuned. You son of a... Really, nigga?